boy. <laughs> you know what time it is? It's time for the boy. I'm very focused on movement. I'm, oh, don't bite yourself. Monster Mexican West Coast rattlesnake. I mean, look. Kevin is deep, deep in shed. You can see his eyes are super milky right now. His fang is so long, it's poking his bottom jaw. Thanks. <laughs> Timmy, Cameo, no, you can't come in the crock area, back up. I don't care, I don't wanna hear that sass. What's going on, beautiful people? I, I'm just gonna get some clear. Timmy, don't bite the camera guy. Anyways, beautiful people, I'm just having a good time raising the kids, taking care of all the babies. Timmy, stay out here. I told you, you can't be friends with Miss Toothy. Let's go clean some crocodiles. The tubs are a little bit, no, Timmy. The tubs are a little bit dirty. So we're gonna be cleaning out Ziggy and Anakin, Cougar Dwarf Cayman. Just gotta rinse them out really quick. I already drained them out. Got Ziggy right here. Hopefully she doesn't go too crazy. This crocodile could easily rip your fingers off, so I gotta be super careful. We're just gonna rinse out her enclosure. Get her some fresh water. You can see Ziggy's getting huge. I gotta be really careful with her. Even though she's a good crocodile, she could still rip my fingers right off in a split second, and they're not forgiving. I just wanna rinse this out, fill it up with fresh water. What's up, Ziggy? Look, there's a baby soft shell turtle right here. How cool is that? And then you got Aries hanging out right there, basking. It's a little green right now because I was cleaning out the water on these little tubs, so it's flown into the pond. Oh my god, a little soft shell turtle, that's awesome. All right, got Ziggy's enclosure almost done. Just got to fill it up a little bit more, add another foot of water. And you can see Ziggy's looking good. She has become such a beast. I am so proud of this crocodile. My first ever crocodile under my license. She's becoming a beautiful, mature woman. Get those weeds, camels. Get those weeds. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate your service. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Mm, very nice. Guys, check this out. We're still filling up the tubs with water, and Aries is in ambush mode in the corner of the pond, thinking he might get a chance at Cameo and Timmy. That just shows you that no matter how much you work with crocodiles, they still have killer instinct. Aries! Sneaky boy! Hey, Miss Toothy. What are you doing, Miss Toothy? You dinosaur. Aries! You can't eat my camels. All right, nice and full of water. Let's close this up, get a lock on it, make sure it's nice and secure. And now we're gonna be dealing with Anakin, the saltwater crocodile, the biggest reptile on the planet. He's right here. Look at him, Ooh, look at that, big boy. Look at him, he's eating good. He's got a full belly of shrimp right now. Lately, I've been just going to the bait shops and buying eight dozen, 10 dozen shrimp feeding all the estuary and crocodile shrimp because that's what they eat naturally in the wild. It helps them grow good calcium and protein. What are you doing, buddy? You getting cranky? Look at that beautiful crocodile. Huh? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. A little fast for you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my thumb was stuck in his mouth a couple weeks ago, but he's, he's pretty chill. What? I was just telling my buddy Gavin that these crocodiles vocalize a whole lot. They have their own language. They talk to each other. Listen. Oh. Wow, he's, had, he's got a mouth on him. <laughs> oh, look at this. It's a spicy meatball shrimp sausage. Oh. <laughs> oh. Woo -hoo -hoo. Look at Anakin. He's becoming such a beast of a croc. You know, if he becomes a big chill crocodile, that's cool. I'll be able to ride him around and sit on the base of his tail when he's full grown. But even if he's a big cranky crocodile, I'm cool with that. Saltwater crocodiles are the most dangerous crocs out there next to the Cuban crocs and now crocodiles being one of the most responsible for human deaths throughout Southeast Asia and Northern Australia. Literally, these guys see anything as a food source. Even a big buffalo near the water's edge, they will take it down and rip it apart. Humans, sharks, other crocodiles, saltwater crocs are the ultimate predators. Look at him, he's becoming thick. That's a good looking crocodile. I love Anakin, I love crocodiles. All right, I'm gonna put him back. We're gonna get this water filled up and then we're gonna see the Cougar's Dwarf female. She's over there, she needs to get a nice cleaning too. All right, beautiful people. This is nice and clean, filled up with water. Just gotta get Anakin nice and locked up. Put a, put a nice secure lock on that thing, baby, because this is the world's biggest reptile. We gotta make sure it's secure. We ain't playing no games. Acid contain, acid contain, baby. Look at that. Ooh, I just ripped my pants. Right here, we have the female Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. She's gonna be the future wife of that big male we just got shipped in. So all we're gonna do is just spray off the edges real quick. 
make it nice and pretty in here, get all that gunk out of here. Cause she had a bunch of shrimp and rats and all kinds of good tasty stuff. And you can see the giant Amazon river turtle right here. He's getting huge, look at this guy. Huge, giant Amazon river turtle. Only a couple years old. And he was the size of my palm when I first got him. Look at my hand now. Isn't that insane? They get so huge. I want more of these guys. So if you guys have them here in Florida, hit me up. There we go. Gonna let this flow out a little bit. She's such a badass caiman. This is the world's smallest crocodilian, the Cuvier's Dwarf Caiman. Palparosis, commonly confused with Trigonotus, which is a smooth front caiman. And a good way to tell the difference between the two is a smooth front caiman gets bigger and they got longer osteoderms on the neck, on that nuchal cluster, which is what you call those bones on the neck. They're spiky, longer, taller. Whereas a Cuvier's Dwarf Caiman, they're short. They're not that tall. They're kind of like an alligator's osteoderms, which is a great way to tell. Hey, turtle, leave that caiman alone. I that turtle's so much trouble. That turtle will harass any crocodile, alligator. Anything from the Amazon's gotta be tough. What are you doing, turtle? Leave that caiman alone. Woo! Whoa! Just want to give you guys a little update on Bridget, the broad snout caiman. She's looking super dark because she's living in a black tub and she's adapting to her environment. Crocodilians will change color to adapt to their area. So if they're in a dark area, their pigment turns dark. And if they're in a light area like white sand, they turn into a beige coloration. She's usually yellow with black spots, if you guys can remember. But right now she looks like she's black. Look at that. She's still a badass crocodilian. I mean, look at those short, broad jaws. Little surface area, lots of pressure for one bite. And I know because I've been bit. <laughs> All right, relax. We're gonna put it right back in. Nice and easy. And let's see how Blue's doing my smooth front. I haven't taken him out for you guys in a while. Look at this guy. This is one of my first ever Cayman next to Bridget. This is Blue, even though he's not too blue. He's a smooth front Cayman. This is uh, Trigonotus. So this is the Schneider's Cayman, smooth front Cayman, or also known as Palusuchus Trigonotus, which is the heavily armored crocodilian, the most heavily armored crocodilian, making their skin not valuable at all for poachers. And you can see on the, oy! see those really tall osteoderms? That's what I was talking about earlier. That's what makes them so different from the Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. They're so much more heavily armored. They're gnarly little crocodilians. And these guys can get about six feet, whereas the Cuvier's Dwarf only gets about five feet long. Oh, look, he's cranky. How cool is that? Been raising this guy since he was about five inches long, a little hatchling. That's a dinosaur. How cool is that? Ooh, nocturnal species. They don't like to, they don't like to be out during the day. Oi, relax, relax. Not fun to get bit by. I've been bit by this one before. Relax, nice and easy. Ooh, you're really cranky today. All right, so the water is just about full. We're gonna put her platform back, excuse me. There you go. Now she has her little den to hide, her little basking spot. She's not too happy with it. Let's close this up, get it nice and secure. And we're gonna go see how Bagoy's doing. The salty's talking again. Oh my goodness. Uh, do you know what time it is? It's time for Bagoy. But oh my sweet Eurasian eagle owl child ripping apart the baby chicks like like they ain't even a thing. Oh, how you doing, Bagoy? Ooh, happy horse noises. You can see Bagoy's got a nice clean looking beak. We just coped him. Coping is when you manicure the beak and you take care of the claws because sometimes in captivity, there's not enough rough surfaces for them to naturally file down their beaks. So now he's got a nice clean looking beak. Can I touch your beak? Oh, you got a nice beak. Mm, 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 mm. Tastes like dead chicken. Wow. You want the rest of this? There you go, my sweet child. Have a nice little meal right there. Who needs a security system when you have owls with towns poised ready to go? Fly away, my child. Fly away. Claw out anyone's eyes who aren't supposed to be here. Ooh, all right. We're going to be cleaning some snakes. Fed not too long ago, so the Dimeback rattlesnakes have pooped. Colette snake has pooped. Death adder. Mexican West Coast. So we're going to start with the Eastern Dimebacks. These are the little babies I've been raising for years since I got my hermits. Ooh, what's going on, baby? This is my male, beautiful Eastern Dimeback rattlesnake, looking sexy. Local snake here to Florida. These guys can roughly get about six to eight feet long, being the record, being the biggest rattlesnakes on the planet. Look at that. Two beautiful Eastern Dimeback rattlesnakes. What are you doing? Come here. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. 
Look at that. Been raising these guys since they're tiny little worms. They're not too bad. Pretty good snakes. Just gonna close that up and clean up the spiciest of meatballs. My doctor said to save them calmly this time so I don't have palpitations. I can do that, it's not a big deal, come on. Ah, see? Look, it's a spicy meatball, no, no reason to scream. <laughs> uh. ah! oh! Spicy. <laughs> Get a little bit more. <laughs> there we go, nice and calm. Ow. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, look at that hunk of, that's a meatloaf right there, baby. That was my boot, I didn't fart. Why would I, I would never fart in front of you guys. All right, nice and clean enclosure. We can take these babies and put them back. Oh, hello babies. Real beautiful. Females going through shed. This is the male, beautiful black charcoal saddles. Call it Diamondback Rattlesnake, gives that Diamondback pattern. He's so good looking, look at that guy. Love my rattlesnakes. Ew! What a beast. Look at that. Love almost like a raccoon banding behind the eyes. What's up, dude? Nice and easy. Right into the enclosure. We got the female right here. Here we go, baby. There we go. Oops. Nice and easy. Look at that big, beautiful girl. Even when she's deep in shed, she's still gorgeous. Love these guys. Let me close that up. Put a lock on it. Make sure it's nice and secure. The death adder pooped and it shed its skin. But I had a fan here the other day and they really wanted the shed skin for their kids. So I hooked them up and we sent that away. But there's still a spicy meatball. In the enclosure, we need to clean it because that's all part of maintenance. Let's do this, guys, nice and professional. All right, just gotta be real careful because the feeding response on a death adder is insane. This is the fastest striking snake on the planet. This guy's in deep, deep camouflage right now, hiding under the aspen. And I'm actually be gonna be getting a new death adder pretty soon, a different species that's actually yellow banded. It's gonna be so cool, can't wait to show that off. Look at this beautiful common death adder. Gorgeous red coloration. They seem pretty slow and sluggish, but this is the fastest striking snake on the planet because they hunt down skinks on rocky outcrops, so they have to be extremely fast to be able to catch their prey. And they use this little tail as a lure. looks like a grub, and they wiggle it around and try to lure skinks over to them so they can envenomate them with the eighth most potent venom on the planet. How crazy. Put them right into there. Let's, let's take care of this fecal matter. We're going to clean it. And that's it. Nothing crazy, no screaming. We're professional. We're very professional here. There we go. Just gonna take out the water dish. Super simple, super professional. We're good. Well, look, look at this fecal matter. Oh, <laughs> you can say it's a little hot, it's a little spicy, whatever you want. It's just, it's just poop. We're calm. No reason to scream. No reason to scream at all. No reason to scream. No reason to scream. <laughs> All right, let's get this little death adder out. There we go. Look at that beautiful snake. Very placid animal once it's out of the enclosure, but the feeding response is what makes them so dangerous. If you get bit by a snake during a feeding response, it thinks it's getting food, so it's going to give you a deadly dose of venom. Look at that cute little face. How can you not love death adders? Little, little slug, little caterpillar. Nice and easy, Paul. Right into the enclosure. Such a sexy looking snake. Look at that pattern. That gorgeous looking tail that looks like a grub. Close that up, put a lock on it. There we go, nice and easy. Uh, spicy meat balls everywhere I look. It's like Christmas, but it's poop everywhere. Santa, you can't give me what I want, only my snakes. I'm not sure where Meatball's hiding. Meatball's a Colette snake from Australia. He's in the top 15 most venomous. Very, very potent bite to be taken seriously. I have raised him up from a little baby, so he's not too bad. I just want to know exactly where he is. I don't see him. Oh, yeah, he's under the aspen in the back. Come on. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, what are you doing? What are you doing, Meatball? There we go. Look at this beautiful snake. Whoa. Look at that. Ooh, look at that snake. Ooh, he's going through the croc skull. He's going all over the place. Redirect him a little bit. Look at that beautiful red Colette snake from the top 15 most venomous on the planet. Meatball the Colette snake. One day, we're going to find one of these out in the wild of Australia. One day. Close that up. 
Oh, oh, he's coming out today. He's all over the place. He didn't like getting woken up. You're okay, buddy. Right back inside. There we go. Secure that. Get these. Uh, get this. Get this poop out of here. That's it. It's just poop. Nothing else. No reason to scream. We're calm. We're cool. Collective. Bam. Poop. Whatever. I don't care. I'm not enthusiastic about poop. Who cares about poop? Oh wow, this one's really firm. Oh, that's really. It's really spicy. Wow. <laughs> Maybe just this one, sorry. Spicy meatball! Ah, 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 ah. Just rip me out. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> All right, guys, the enclosure's nice and clean and we can put meatball right back where he belongs. Look at him, what a beautiful snake. Let's get him out of the darkness. And into the light, Ooh! Such a cool looking snake, like, ugh! He was just a little baby when I got him. He was literally like two foot long. He was tiny. Now he's gotta be at least like six foot or something. He's big. Get him right back into his enclosure. Very soon he's gonna get an even bigger enclosure. Woo, look at that. I love Australian snakes. Asian snakes and Australian snakes are my favorite reptiles on the planet. Okay, now that that's taken care of, we can deal with Big Bertha. She's been eating a good amount of food, so she's growing and she's pooping like crazy. She might still be in shed. Big Bertha is the first ever cobra that I laid my hands on when I was like 15 at my buddy's facility. He retired, gave me this snake, and then Big Bertha laid a clutch of eggs, which are all those babies we we're looking at, and hatching out about two months ago or so, which by the way, a bunch of the babies are eating. Very good news, I was just cleaning them the other day. Look at Big Bertha. Ooh, what's up, Big Bertha? Woo, Big Bertha, deep, deep in shed, looking way better than when she laid the eggs. Obviously, it takes a lot of energy and whatnot to produce eggs. So she lost a lot of weight when she laid those eggs. But look at that beautiful monocled cobra. And very focused on movement. It's okay, mama. She's very predictable. Easier to work with than other monocled cobras that I've dealt with. And that's why you see me do the things I do with her. And some monocled cobras in my collection, I don't even handle like this. Like my albino, oh, don't bite yourself. My albino monocled cobra. I would never handle like this, but I can handle my Indian covers like this, uh, my leucistic monocle cover that Tyler gave me is easier to handle, but other individuals have crazy personalities. It's all depending on the animal and how it acts, how I handle it. So definitely do not replicate what I do. There's so much that goes into my handling and the reading of the body language. It's not as easy as I make it look. You might just walk up to a wild snake if you live in an area where they're native and think it's okay, but sadly, you're gonna learn quick. Other snakes are faster. They might be edgier. They might be bitier. You never know. Some snakes literally just bluff and hood up and sit there and they mock strike, but then you get individuals that do nothing but try to bite you. Then you get individuals that don't even hood up and they just try to bite you. So never replicate what I do. Always take your time when it comes to working with reptiles, especially venomous reptiles. Get a mentor. Don't just try to willy nilly hot dog it and risk your life out there in the wilds of the world. Time to clean the spicy meatballs. <laughs> Enough serious talk. Let's get down to business. Take the water, a little skadoosh, because it's dirty. You see this right here? This is spicy goodness. Yes! No gloves were required. Gloves are for little girls. Oh, this shit's like concrete, brother. It's a little stickier than I thought. Let me get the chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine is a great way to decon surface areas. You dilute it with a lot of water, and it's great for spraying down poop on the surfaces of the enclosure. Let it sit, and then you wipe it down. In the meantime, I'm gonna go give this a nice little scrub. All right, guys, we got the enclosure nice and clean. Just giving some fresh water to that hole. And now it's time to put, and now it's time. <laughs> now it's time to put Big Bertha back. We're gonna pop this open. Oh, see, look at this. That's why I use a tool to open up the container. We got a cranky cobra hanging out right here. What's up, mama? Can I get you? Thank you. Look at her, what a beast of a cobra. I met this snake when she was literally a uh, foot and a half long. She was a little baby. And when I heard her hiss outside of her enclosure, I could feel it in my chest. Nothing like working for, with a cobra for the first time in my life. Such a respectable animal, so intense. But you can see how I'm, I, I'm comfortable with what I do. I respect these animals. I've been around them since I was a little kid. I've worked around crocs and snakes and all kinds of crazy stuff my whole life. There we go, right in there. She's a good size too. She's definitely like over six feet long. She's a beast. She's got nice, nice fresh mulch. It's gonna smell good in there for her. Oops. 
Get that locked and secure. Let's deal with Pepe. He's made a nice spicy meatball right under his coils. You can see there's a nasty one waiting for us. So we're gonna take care of him. Everything else is good. Just need to do a little spot clean. I did a deep clean on most of my enclosures the other day. So let's take care of Pepe. Nice and easy, Pepe. You can see he got out of shed not too long ago. He looks so beautiful. Look at that snake. Look, you beast. Let me redirect him a little bit. There we go. Woo! Relax. Nice and easy, Pepe. Look at that thing. He is a monster Mexican West Coast rattlesnake. I mean, look. What a beast of a rattlesnake. How can you not think these snakes are badass? Obviously very respectable. And I've known this guy for a while, so I'm able to read his body language, but he's letting you know right now he's not happy. So let's get him right into the can. Nice and easy. Oh, he was sitting in his poop, so now he's smelling like his poop. That's great. So we're just gonna pull this meatball out. More like a pancake. Let's just gently go around, because they do swallow their fangs sometimes. They shed their fangs like sharks do. So sometimes they swallow it and it's in their poop and you can get poked. Usually there's no venom, but still, if you're gonna get poked with poop, you can get infected. You don't wanna deal with that. So I gotta be careful how I grab this poop out. There we go. Nice and clean now. He's definitely not in a good mood today, so let's not push it with him. Nice and easy, buddy. Look at that snake. What a beast of a rattlesnake. How can you not love these animals? Even if you're scared of them, understand that snakes like this, just their venom alone, can be used for medications that people related to you are probably using, like your grandparents or your aunts or uncles. There's lots of venom or components of venom and different medications for heart, for blood thinners, for medications for the brain that are components of snake venom or reptile venom, like Gila monster venom. So even if you don't like snakes like this, understand they hold great purpose for helping humanity out. And there's still so much to learn through the venom of snakes and other reptiles throughout the world that could benefit us as a human race. Let's go see how Kevin's doing. He's deep in shed. I'm gonna give him some water so he can drink up. Ooh, look at this. Kevin is deep, deep in shed. You can see his eyes are super milky right now. At this stage of the shedding process, there's a liquid layer between the old and the new skin. So right now he's almost blind. You can see shadows, but that's about it. I'm just gonna offer him some water and see how he feels. Maybe he wants to get a drink and hydrate. Water does help with the shedding process. So I'm just gonna trickle him with water. You want some water? No? He doesn't seem to be too interested. Oh no, he wants some water, there he is. There you go, big boy. Just trying to hydrate him. He has water in this big tub next to me all the time, but sometimes it's good just to show your snakes where the water's at. Because when they're in this deep shedding process, it's sometimes difficult to figure things out. Look at that, he's just chugging water right now. Look how milky his eyes are, look at that. How cool is that? He's just chugging water like crazy right now. Kevin is roughly about 14, 15 foot long King Cobra. The record is over 18 foot. Caught out in Malaysia and kept at the London Zoo. It was an 18 foot plus individual is the record. Hopefully one day we can get Kevin to get that big. That'd be amazing. I mean, look at him. Look how much of a beast. Ooh, I'm sorry, Kevin. It's okay, buddy. Just gonna offer him some more water, see what he does. Look, he's just like, that tastes great. Look at that. And if you see on the side of his bottom jaw, you see there's a bit of discoloration. That's actually from his fang. His fang is so long, it's poking his bottom jaw. And there's a few types of venomous snakes out there that have such long fangs that it does this. Coastal taipans from Australia have such long fangs, they poke through the bottom jaw. For Kevin, it's poking down the sides of the jaw, creating that little hole right there, where it's a bit of discoloration, just to show how big his fangs are. He is fully loaded, and he has the second biggest venom yield of any venomous snake on the planet. And between this guy and the Gaboon Viper, they're the only two snakes believed to be able to kill a bull elephant with one bite. So a very respectable snake. I've just been working with him for many, many years, and I understand his body language, and I know how to work around him, so it lets me get away with stuff like this. How freaking cool is this? He's just chugging water like crazy right now. Look how big he is. He's a thick snake. He's thicker than my forearm. What do you think, Evan? 
I love you. You are such a beast of a king cobra. Ooh, it's okay, Kevin. All right, beautiful people, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, remember to follow your dreams and stay passionate about what you guys love. This is what I love. I've been pursuing it since I was a little kid, and everything's been working out for me. So I highly suggest to everyone out there, if there's something you love in life, pursue it. Put all your energy into it, and everything will fall into place. <laughs> all right, he's had enough. Bye. See you later. We'll just be hanging out in here, telling scary stories. Oh, <laughs> oh,